Hello everyone, welcome back to the series Getting Easy with Apache Airflow. This is the second part in which we are going to be looking at the Airflow architecture, starting off with some core components and then looking at a generic architecture, proceeding with what type of executors Airflow provides with the detailed architecture view of each of them. For those of you who are completely new to the Airflow, I would highly recommend to watch our previous video in which we looked at the basics of Airflow, including the core terminologies like what is a DAG, what is a task, and the very basics of how Airflow works. So let's get started. Looking at the core components here, we have a scheduler which sits at the heart of Airflow, which actually is responsible for triggering the DAGs as well as the tasks according to their DAG timings as well as the dependencies. To do so, it actually submits the task to the executor to run. What is an executor? It is an entity that handles and manages the running tasks. A worker is a place where the tasks are actually running. Airflow provides an interface for the users where they can inspect, trigger, and debug the tags and the task behaviors. We have a metadata database that stores the information about the tags and task states. Then we have our DAG folder, which is accessible to the scheduler, web server, and the workers from where they retrieve the actual Python code that defines the DAG and the tasks. Starting off with the user who initially wants to view and monitor the running DAGs and the tasks, it will gonna hit the front end of the web server, which is actually connected with the scheduler, and they both have access to the metadata database. As I said, both web server and scheduler have access to the DAGs directory where they can retrieve the DAGs code, by which means the user is able to view, manage, and monitor all of the DAGs in one place. And then we have an executor which is managed by the scheduler whose responsibility is to trigger and manage the tasks, which it does that by managing the workers. The workers also have access to the DAGs as well as the metadata database. Last but not least, all of the workers, when finished executing the tasks, stores the logs in a logs directory which is accessible to the user via web server. We have different type of executors that Airflow provides and each of them have their own architecture. So the one that you're looking at down below is a very generic one. We'll be looking at the specific executors in the upcoming slides. Looking at the slide from our previous video where we looked at uh, how a DAG view looks like where we have like number of tasks depending on each other. Executors are the mechanism by which task instances get run. As I said, Airflow provides different type of executors, but you can only have one executor configured at a time. So let us start off with a very basic executor called sequential executor. This is the default executor, which is already pre-configured in Airflow environment. It runs within the scheduler in its own Python sub process. As the name says, this executor is able to run only one task instance at a time. And because of its simplicity, it can easily run in SQLite. The reason it is recommended is because any other MySQL will be an overkill for this. The advantages of this includes you need no setup to run this because this comes as a default executor in Airflow. So you don't have to configure anything. It is lightweight as well as cheap because we are not using any more resources other than the scheduler itself, which is already running. Because it runs one task instance at a time, that's why it is not scalable. And of course it is slow. It is single point of failure. All the things are depending on the scheduler. If that dies, everything goes down. And for all these obvious reasons, it is not suitable for production. And then we have a local executor, which is exactly the same as the sequential. Only the difference being here is it can manage multiple task instances at a time by running multiple sub processes within the same scheduler. And because it has to handle multiple DAGs and task instances at the same time, the ideal database for this will be MySQL or Postgres. The setup requires nothing more than just adding a parameter in the Airflow configurations that I need to use this local executor. And you have to do nothing else except this. Airflow will gonna manage everything by itself after that. It is definitely cheap and lightweight because we are using no more resources other than the scheduler itself. And yes, it can run multiple tasks, which is a good thing. Because since you are running all of the tasks inside the same machine, you are heavily relying on the resources of the scheduler. The obvious risk is that if something happens to the main machine where the scheduler and the tasks are running, your task will see a standstill until that machine is back up. 
So it is a single point of failure, which is definitely not suitable for production as well as for scale. Celery Executor, unlike sequential and local executor, runs the task on a dedicated machine. We have a distributed task queuing system. Celery Executor, case, unlike sequential and local executor, runs the task on a dedicated sends the machine. Task from the scheduler, from where we have fixed number of Celery workers that picks up the task from the queue and executes them. It is built for horizontal scaling. You can predefine specific set of workers that will manage your tasks. It is fault tolerant. If one worker goes down, the task will be given to the other active and healthy worker and hence it is quite reliable for production. Some of the drawbacks that includes are it takes additional time to set up because not only you have to configure in Airflow configurations but you have to set up this RabbitMQ service as well as fix sets of salary workers. The other drawback which I believe is the very significant one is we have resource wastage if there is no task to be scheduled because we have fixed number of salary workers running and they will always be running 24 hours even if the task queue is empty. So in that sense, it is definitely not cost effective. Kubernetes Executor, which is one of my favorite, leverages the power of Kubernetes for resource management and optimization. It runs the task on a dedicated pod. A pod is a terminology in Kubernetes which is nothing more than just a dedicated machine in which you can run single or even multiple containers. So the way how it works is the, this executor talks to the Kubernetes API to dynamically launch the pods, which gets terminated when the task has been completed. The executor also checks the status of these pods in order to update the metadata, as well as it fetches the logs of these worker pods. The advantages of the Kubernetes executor is that we can scale it down to zero, which means in the time of high traffic, you can scale it up to as many pods as you want. And if you have no tasks to be executed, then the executor will have no pods running. So we are basically scaling it down to zero. It is fault tolerant because of the way how Kubernetes manages the pods as it gets scaled. They are respawned automatically by the Kubernetes deployment configurations. Since a pod manages a single task, so this executor allows you to configure the resource allocation of that pod, which is definitely a resource effective way of managing the tasks. One of the, which I believe very minor drawback of this is that while launching the pod, it takes like few seconds to launch. And of course you have to have a Kubernetes knowledge because in order to use this, all of these Airflow components needs to be deployed on a Kubernetes cluster. In the end, let us conclude by comparing the executors that we discussed. So we have so far seen two local executors and two remote executors, and it is good to compare those with the same nature. So sequential and local executors based on the advantages and disadvantages of them, it is ideal for learning Airflow. You can also test your DAGs and task workflows using these executors and good for testing the cases where you have to handle single point of failures because they do are going to provide you single point of failure. Whereas in local executor, which provides parallelism of tasks, it can be used for small scale workflows, like where you have four or five clone jobs to be managed. But ideally these kind of lightweight workflows in organizations over time do get complicated. So one should definitely be migrating from local to remote executors, which as we discussed is production ready. Salary Executor is also not easy to set up. Whereas on the other hand, if you have no knowledge of Kubernetes, then definitely it is not an easy setup for you. In Salary, you have always fixed amount of workers up and running with a predefined configurations and resources. Whereas in Kubernetes, the workers spin up on demand and we can also configure each worker with specified resources. So out of these choosing which one to go for, if you already have a knowledge of Kubernetes, then I would highly recommend you to select the Kubernetes executor. Else go for salary executor if you are not much worried about the wastage of resource allocation or your workflow is too heavy that you always have task instances running most of the time. In that way, you're going to make sure that the workers are always being used. And with that, we are actually done with this session. I hope you got a clear understanding of the basic Airflow architecture as well as the architecture of the major Airflow executors. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment them down in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer them as soon as I can. 
If this video was helpful to you, please don't forget to like. And also, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This will gonna help me to produce more content for you guys. So till then, I will see you in the next video. Take care.